All right, so we just got divergence. Let's do another example. All right, we'll go all this one B, K, and this will be negative one to the N. I want to know convergence or divergence. And the last one, I'll put them both up. Last one will be CK. All right, so tell me convergence or divergence for BK and for CK. You're just taking limits as K goes to infinity. Neither of these are L'Hopital's rule. So don't use L'Hopital's rule here. This does not apply. I can very easily create a L'Hopital's rule question, but these don't happen to use L'Hopital's rule. And when you get convergence, you have to tell me what number it converges to. And if it diverges, you either tell me plus infinity, minus infinity, or does not exist. All right, so let's talk about the negative one. Oh, there should have been negative one to the k power, but you probably figured that out. So if it would have been negative, it would have uh, diverged? What's that? If the number would have been negative, it would have diverged instead of converged? If which number would have been negative? The four. four. No, that wouldn't have made a difference. It would have made it converge to negative four instead of positive four. You're talking about the, for the CK series? So let's look at C, CK first. So we have to take a limit as K approaches infinity, and it's 4 minus 1 half to the K. So just using the limit rule, we're allowed to split up sums and differences. So it's a limit of the 4 minus the limit of the other term. Limit of 4 is 4. Limit of the other term is a 1 half raised to higher and higher powers. So that gets smaller and smaller, and the limit will be 0. So we got convergence to 4. So that one was pretty straightforward right there. Now let's look at the BK. What can you say about the BK series? It's not very exciting. There's two values, positive one or negative one, depending on what K is. But the problem is, does it ever get close to a single value? So it does get close to one, except it's also negative. not close to one. It's also negative one. 
So it gets close to two numbers, but <clears throat> no matter what, if we graph it out, it's pretty easy to graph. It just goes positive one, negative one, positive one, negative one. But the idea is it never settles down and gets close to a single value. It's just as close. So if you say, hey, let's, let's look at a positive one, well, no matter how far out you go, you have all these negative ones that are far away. Same thing if you try to say negative one is the limit, you will have all these positive ones that keep showing up and they don't get any closer. So this second one is does not exist, so it diverges because the limit does not exist. Now web work, I think we'll use the uh, DNE a lot of times, so DNE will be a common uh, answer for limits here. So there's, uh, of course you can use the sandwich theorem. I don't want to go back over the sandwich theorem, but you can look back at the sandwich theorem. I'll just write that down, just the name. Sandwich theorem applies here. It applies sometimes here. I didn't need to use the sandwich theorem on these examples, uh, but there are sometimes you may need to use the sandwich theorem. Uh, there's also the continuous function theorem. And I'll write that down. If there exists a function Is this a continuous function? And this function needs to go from, it'll usually go from the interval starting at your initial k value, which I think we're using k0. Somewhere I wrote k0, or maybe not. So it will go from k0 to infinity. Such that f of k equals a k. For all k in z plus, meaning for all positive integers. So the idea is if there's a continuous function who has the same value at all integers, then you can just take the limit of this function. So then limit as k goes to infinity of a k will be the same thing as limit k goes to infinity of f of k. Most of these a k's will already uh, be continuous. The only exceptions are the factorial is not actually a continuous function across the real numbers. So that's about the only time you can't line up a continuous function. Let's do one last example. So this will be a square root. 4k plus 1 over k. So I'll give you a hint. Somewhere along the way, you'll probably need L'Hopital's rule. Or you can go with physicist method. So I'll give you two minutes to get this convergence or divergence. Remember, if it converges, tell me the number it converges. If it diverges, tell me plus infinity, minus infinity, or does not exist.
fine. Yeah, you, you derive the, um, you derive the top and bottom, and then you just solve it out, I believe. I thought you split it up the door. You a negative number? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you set it limit of k goes to infinity, and then you get mm -hmm. infinity over infinity. But then you gotta like do four k over k plus one over k, I guess. Today or what? Hmm? Are there like three or four kids missing? Yeah. yeah Beard guy's missing. Yesterday. He wasn't here yesterday, and then what's your face? And uh, another guy that comes in. The <laughs> I don't know. The beard guy. Yeah, I know. Why are you so many? Huh? Why are you so Dude, I don't know. Hmm? I don't know. That one guy that comes in randomly. He just started home? coming in. Yeah, he's. That girl? I saw her yesterday. Just walking home. Who? Oh, did you? I saw her too. Uh, I usually like, 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 I see her every day. She just has a her a 10 o'clock class. Wait, what? I just walked Where are the, the like, blonde like, hey. And she's, she started coming and then she she's still here. No, she's still in the classroom. She's still here. No, not at least what happened? She, there. There. she just dropped the class. She had to go. Yeah. She just wanted to be a high school teacher, yeah. like math teacher. That's kind of hard to do it though. I mean, I guess you probably could do it, but. Wouldn't that be splitting it up too? Do you want to be a high school math teacher? Just math? Like, just go I have no idea what you said. We didn't say anything bad, but <laughs> <laughs> that's weird thinking. We just got recorded. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why am I allowed to do this? Why am I allowed to push the limit inside square root? So the rule I just used will let g of x equal square root of x, or x to the half power. And what we just wrote was limit of g of 4k plus 1 over k equals g of the limit 4k plus 1 over k. When am I allowed to swap the order of taking a limit and a function? There are times I'm allowed to and times I'm not allowed to. When am I allowed to make this swap? What property about the square root function lets me swap the order? Of course, we're doing k to infinity. There is one particular property of the g function that I needed. That's exactly right, when g is continuous. Now, of course, square root's not continuous everywhere, but it's continuous for positive values. And we're taking a limit at positive infinity, so let's just worry about values bigger than 1. So the square root function is continuous on positive values, so I'm allowed to swap. Uh, I call this pushing a limit through the function right there. So I didn't really explicitly write down the function here except I knew it was a square root function, so I was allowed to push the limit through the square root function. 
So that's what it looks like algebraically. Any questions about that move? Ah. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Is that why you were so confused? Yeah. One of the reasons? Yeah, All right. One of the, one of the. <laughs> All right. So from here, you could write this as uh, do some algebra 4 plus 1 over k, I think would be a nice move right there. Lim k approaches infinity. You can, of course, use L'Hopital's rule or the physicist method, or maybe some other way as well, but this is just square root 4 plus 0, which is 2. And there are some other ways to do this, but I think dealing with the square root like this is probably the most straightforward way to do it. Get that square root out of the way and deal with it right at the end. All right, so this converges to 2. Yep. Well, if it's illegal, we better not call the police. Okay. Um, Math police are not very nice. <laughs> Can I split it up? No, you cannot do that. Okay. <laughs> That's really bad algebra. <laughs> okay. All right. The reason <clears throat> the reason you can't so you can do a little bit of algebra, which is the algebra I did, which turns this into four plus one over k, but what that is not equal to is square root 4 plus square root 1 over k. And that's because powers and sums or differences don't work well together. Okay. So if this was, instead of plus, if that was times, this would work. Wouldn't that be square root 4 over k plus 1 over k? Would that be a legal Because I got 2 at the end, but so the 1 over infinity just turns into Yeah, well, I'm going to do that in the square root 4, which turns into 2, and that's convergence. Where's the 4 over k? 4k over k. Yeah, what's k over k? One. Yeah. One. So there's there's a little one over one that I didn't bother writing. Or k yeah. over k, whatever. How many times in a quarter do you correct that mistake? The the freshman's yeah, dream the mistake? Fifty. Yeah. <laughs> Probably the same number of days I've that never, are in the yeah, quarter. I've never made that. I've never really I don't think I've gone more than like three started. days in a row without seeing that happen. If it was four k times. And I gotta say it happens at that table a lot. I might, have, I, might have, I might have had it happen like once, which is starting here. Um, so if it was 4K times 1, like if it's just 4K, I think could you apply it that way then? If it was multiplied instead of yeah. added, yeah. Okay. okay. Absolutely. And then you'd be basically bringing that factor of 4 out front of the limit. Right. All right. Limits are relatively, uh, they, they, they play well with all continuous functions. So whether it's plus, you know, addition, multiplication, division, as long as you're not divided by zero or, you know, of course when infinity shows up, that's where you have to be super careful. Uh, but <clears throat> I didn't have to be careful because I did all my algebra before I applied the limit. So I didn't have to worry about the fact that we were going to infinity until pretty much the exact like last step where I actually took, here's the only time I actually worried about where, where k was going to. Everything else, would have worked if k went to 10 instead of infinity. When you think you replace the k with the infinity, so infinity or infinity, which is just 1, technically speaking, oh, one cancel out the, the 1, and then 1 over infinity, yeah. which is... Yeah, that's, that's what I basically didn't write right there. Yeah, which that equals 0. Yep. That's pretty close. That's the question that's it. So you can do the wrong work and still get the same answer. <laughs> Sometimes. Positive, positive or negative 2? The square root has a plus and minus value. So this one will be positive 2 here. So it's just square root of 4. Uh, I think maybe what you're thinking about is if you started with an equation like x squared equals 4, x could be plus or minus 2. Yeah. But we started with uh, square root yeah, x equals square root 4 as opposed to, in the other situation, it could be plus or minus. But when you start on this, with this situation, it's just going to be positive. Carlos, can, can I see your rule over time on the top right? Uh, oh, I got it. That, you just, you're just swapping the order of the limit and the function. Okay, one second. 
All right. Hey, Tim, I'll take a picture so you can compare. I got you. I got you. This is all available online for free. Oh, I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> man, so it'll sit there for probably till well after the quarter's over. <laughs> and you're dead and gone. And, <laughs> and probably Microsoft won't last that long. Yeah, so? <laughs> Maybe it will. Who knows? I'm not a business major. All right, let's read down some common limits. These might save you a little bit of time. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. As fun as it is to speculate about things we don't really know about. So we did the uh, natural log n over n way back in L'Hopital's section, and that turned out to be 0 because natural log grows way slower than just n. So x to the 1 over n power, which of course is the nth root of x, this is going to equal 1 if x is greater than 0. Is that log yep. And this next one works no matter what value x has. The nth root of n will have a limit of 1. And we'll start over here on the right. Regular x to the n equals 0 if absolute value of x is small, is less than 1. And the exact opposite thing happens. It goes to infinity if absolute value of x is big, meaning greater than 1. Actually, we need to make sure x is positive. The problem is if x is negative, this goes from being positive, negative, positive, negative. So it'll approach positive infinity and negative infinity if x is negative. So this requires x to be positive. And last one. x to the n over n factorial will equal 0 for any x. And what the last one says is factorial beats polynomials. So those may speed up some of your problems on homeworks. So what would happen if we had lim n approaches infinity n factorial over x to the n? And of course, you may need to make sure x if we're going to be taking uh, uh, powers of it, you want to make sure you're not dividing by 0. How can I use the last identity here to help me with this? So if we knew the reciprocal or the original limit was 0, what would that mean about the reciprocal? What's the reciprocal of 0? Undefined. What's the reciprocal of a really tiny number? Really big number. Really big number. So this one, as long as x is uh, positive, uh, if x is negative, this will uh, be uh, bounced around. But if x is greater than 0, this is going to be uh, positive infinity. It's the, basically the reciprocal of 0. 
So we used that last identity right there and basically looked at the reciprocal. So it would be the reciprocal of a tiny number, which is a huge number. So there are recursively defined sequences, and I'll just briefly talk about them right now. So we'll get some initial terms that will be given to us. Then the ak plus one term, the next term, will be defined by previous terms. Sometimes it's defined by just the one term that comes before, sometimes it's defined by multiple terms that come before. So we'll just look at two quick examples. Let's say a0 is 0, a1 is 1, and ak plus 1 equals 2 times ak. So write down A2, A3, and A4. So I showed you how to define A2 in terms of A1. All you do is multiply by 2. So this sequence right here is going to be a looks like it would be a, basically a geometric. The only difference is that first term doesn't fit in that pattern, but this has a doubling effect. It looks like 2 to the k. So you can write down recursive sequences that act like the regular sequences we've looked at. Uh, you can also do a few more things that are difficult to do without this recursive definition. So this next sequence, the k plus 1 term is defined by not just the term before, but the two terms that come before. So write down a2, a3, and a4. I'll start you out. a2 is a1 plus a0, the two terms that come before. You add them together. So write down a3 and a4. And if I write a5, 3 plus 2 is 5. So you can keep writing more terms. Anybody, anybody want to show their uh, nerd street cred and name this sequence? It's got a famous name. There's probably only one sequence you know about, and it's this one. Don't remember it? It's not Pascal's triangle or Pascal's sequence. Nope. Fibonacci. This is a Fibonacci sequence. Fibonacci. It sounds Italian. <laughs> I don't know too many Spanish words that end in I. I'm sure there's a few of them. It doesn't end in an I. 
you're going to run out of, <laughs> of words. There you go. C is a word that ends in I in Spanish. <laughs> Which word? I don't think that's a Spanish word, though. It might be. Poppy. Poppy. All right, so we're ready to get out of this section. All right, series. So we'll start with the definition, just like we started with the definition for sequence. Get a new marker. So our definition is a sum of a sequence. So all you're doing is turning your commas into pluses. That's basically the difference between a sequence and a series. It's an ordered list of numbers, except you're adding them together this time. So instead of listing them with commas, you just write a little plus between them. And our notation, we use the Greek letter, it's a capital sigma. Yes. So this is a zero plus a one plus a two plus keep going on forever. That would be infinite and of course finite looks really similar except there's a number at the top it's a 0 plus a 1 plus a 2 plus a n all right so there's finite infinite sequences we can look at partial sums so we'll go with sn is going to be the sum from k equals 0 to n of a k. So you can use partial sums to have this kind of running total, and then you just keep increasing n to think about what happens if I add more and more terms to this. So with the, this idea of partial sums, if you wanted to know what does this add up to, you could take the limit of Sn as n approaches infinity. So one tool we can use to find sums is uh, partial sums. Yeah, I would say, so partial fractions is really different because partial fractions, there's usually a very small number. There's always a finite number of denominators. It's usually like two or three. So here, what we're doing is trying to estimate what's happening to our, our infinite, the sum of infinite terms by looking at the sum of maybe the first 50 terms or the first 100 terms or the first million terms. And if there's a pattern, uh, we might be able to detect it this way by adding some of the terms. So here's a geometric series. Uh, we looked a little bit at finite sums back in pre-calculus class. Uh, finite sums are not terribly exciting because any finite sum, you can just ask a computer to add up those terms and it will add them up for you. All finite sums are going to be finite. So if I add up even 10 million numbers, even if they're big numbers, I'm going to get a finite number. So the only time you run into problems adding things up is infinite sums. So we're basically only going to focus on infinite sums here. So a geometric series, we saw this before. We saw a geometric sequence. All I'm going to do is instead of writing, uh, I'm just going to put a sigma in front instead of writing the curly brackets. So here's a geometric series. You're going to multiply by r every time you move over. So it looks like r to the k. And <clears throat> we actually can get the sum very easily. I don't want to go back over the algebra for this. 
uh, but the algebra is relatively easy to, to do. It uses partial sums and then takes a limit. So we're going to use this right here uh, to work these next examples. So some of these are going to have to re-index or do other algebraic operation. All right, so to compute this first sum, what is the pattern? These better be geometric or else we're going to have some problems. So what do I multiply by to move over? Three. Almost three. Oh, one third. One third. So our denominator gets multiplied by three, or you could just say a uh, term gets multiplied by a third total. So I'll write that in this purple marker times one third. I strongly recommend you check two terms or two transitions. So I checked one third, one ninth times a third is one twenty seventh, and I check again one twenty seventh times a third is one eighty first. So I recommend you check uh, three terms total. Make sure your pattern works. All right, so we're going to write this as a sum now. What k value do we start at? It's not zero. So what gives us one ninth? Two. So what is preventing me from using that nice formula at the top? Everything is almost lined up perfectly. Except what? K is not starting at the right value. So I want K to start at zero so I can use this. So there's a couple ways to deal with this. One way is I can shift to zero. The good news about going to infinity is you don't have to shift your endpoint. There is no endpoint. You just go forever. So I can start at zero. However, I do need to shift this power. What is the new power going to be? It'll be k. So I'm dropping k by 2. So I have to compensate and increase it by 2. Oh. So that basically the first gives me a power of 2. So when, my, when I plug in 0, I need a, a power of 2. So it's going to be k plus 2. Any questions on that re-indexing right there? You drop by 2, so you have to compensate and undrop by 2 inside. And good news is, if I, if I was stopping at like 100, I'd have to stop at 102 now. But we're going to infinity, so you don't need to worry about the ends. There is no end. All right, we're ready to use this. There's one thing I forgot to write in here. It's super important. Absolute value of r needs to be small, less than 1. What happens if I add up an infinite number of 1s? What do I get? 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 forever. Infinity. infinity. So if r is 1, I would get infinity. If r is bigger than 1, I actually get to infinity even faster. So that's why r needs to be small, so that you're adding terms that are getting smaller and smaller. All right, so ready to almost ready to apply. Now the problem is we got that plus 2. How do I deal with the plus 2? What algebra can I use here? How about regular old exponent algebra? And then the one third is constant, so I can factor it out. Or it's really one ninth. I can factor that one ninth out. There's not a k. This term has no more k's in it. So every term is multiplied by a ninth. So we're going to factor that out. So at this step, we're finally ready to write the, use that formula up above, which is 1 over 1 minus 1 third. And let's make this look like a nicer fraction. So 1 minus a third is 2 thirds. Reciprocal is 3 halves. 
So we have 1 over 6 is our sum right there. So any questions on getting to this sum right here? So we'll do some more sums, a few more of these uh, geometric sums. And I think we'll do a partial sum problem. And then we'll get into uh, doing all the convergence divergence tests. So that's another one where you have an infinite uh, series, but it's a finite number.